my Jewish cousin started a coffee shop and he gave it a unique name, Hebrews Coffee. Today, I'm going to recap a 2006 action thriller film called The Hard Corpse. The film opens with Philip Sauvage residing in a mental health facility. Philip's life has been fraught with hardships. Furthermore, he's a former soldier who has personally endured battle situations in Iraq and Afghanistan. He engaged in combat with Al-Qaeda, an organization that captured young people and exploded them. Philip is now required to take a temporary leave in the mental health division of a veteran's hospital. We then shift to a wealthy philanthropist and boxer, Wayne Barclay, who is orchestrating several building projects in his local area. While he is in his office, a woman enters and instructs him to turn on the television to watch the news. They find out that a renowned rapper, Terrell Singletary, has been let out of jail after serving only 18 months of a 10-year sentence. This revelation causes concern among Wayne's family, but he reassures them that it won't lead to any issues. Because Terrell was incarcerated due to Wayne's actions, his relatives caution him to be vigilant and suggest hiring protection. Wayne's business manager recommends employing Clarence Bowden, who is also a war veteran. Clarence approaches Philip and informs him of a joint employment opportunity. Terrell, after being set free from prison, climbs into a limo and returns home, where Simcoe, his trusted associate, welcomes him. Terrell expresses his intention to exact revenge on Wayne, ignoring his attorney's counsel to maintain a low profile. In the meantime, Clarence and Philip present themselves at Wayne's sister, Tamara Barkley's office, for a job interview. Tamara outlines the scenario and their potential duties. Following the meeting, Tamara confides in her assistant that she is uncertain about Philip. Philip explains that his strange behavior is a result of PTSD, and she resolves to evaluate Clarence and Philip by taking Wayne to a nightclub with limited security to assess their abilities as bodyguards. Once inside, Clarence and Philip begin to scout the area. Suddenly, Philip is overcome by a PTSD symptom, experiencing vivid flashbacks of intense lights and throbbing music. Tamara observes this and informs her assistant that Philip is unsuitable for the position. When the assistant approaches Philip for a discussion, he insists he'll step outside to monitor the situation. During this time, he sees Terrell's vehicle drive past the club. As the night concludes, Clarence informs Philip that Tamara has chosen not to employ him, a fact that Philip admits he knew from the moment he walked into her office. Shortly after, Wayne departs the nightclub, pausing before entering his car to sign autographs for fans. Soon after, Terrell's associates drive past and initiate an assault on Wayne, firing bullets in his direction. Philip promptly responds, utilizing his gun to shield Wayne from the multitude of attackers. Amidst the gunfire, Clarence uses his body as a barrier to protect Wayne, getting shot and collapsing to the ground. Wayne then takes out the remaining two criminals, only to discover Clarence grievously wounded and dying. The following day, a funeral is held for Clarence, attended by Philip, Wayne, and Tamara. Philip delivers a eulogy during the service. Tamara suggests to Wayne that they should employ Philip as their private security guard. After the ceremony, they approach Philip with a job offer. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by Detective Teague, who places Philip under arrest for firing weapons in public without authorization. Tamara and Wayne are taken aback, but the detective assures them they will have a chance to speak to the judge. The scene then shifts to Terrell's mansion, where his henchmen report that Wayne survived their attack. Enraged, Terrell commands one of the three henchmen to be killed, and warns the others that they must find a way to eliminate Wayne or face the same fate. One henchman brings up Lydia, a woman Wayne is seeing, and they conspire to use their next meeting as an opportunity to ambush him. Meanwhile, Tamara heads to the police station and secures Philip's release. She requests that he form a dependable team of security personnel with himself as the leader, a task that Philip eventually agrees to undertake. A few days later, Detective Teague summons Wayne to the police station. Inside his office, the detective shows Wayne photos of Philip during his military service and reveals that he was committed to a mental institution after killing a group of young people in Iraq, branding him as hazardous and unpredictable. That evening, Philip is invited to the Barclays' home for dinner to become better acquainted with them. 
Tamara greets him warmly, and they enjoy food, drinks, games, and conversation. As they watch a replay of one of Wayne's boxing matches, Wayne arrives, visibly upset but withholding what he learned from the detective. Philip promptly shifts the conversation to work matters, criticizing Wayne's existing security team as inadequate. The next day, Wayne takes Philip to his boxing gym to scout potential security team members. Philip expresses disappointment, insisting that they need experienced professionals, not novice fighters. Nevertheless, Wayne persuades him to give them a try. As they assess the young athletes, Philip initially dismisses a female participant, stating he requires only strong men. She challenges his assumption by stepping into the ring and demonstrating her skill with a flurry of punches. Impressed by her performance, Philip accepts her as a suitable candidate for the team. Shortly thereafter, a man by the name of Casey appears, joining Philip in the task of training the young boxers to become proficient security guards. Philip and Casey instruct them in various techniques, including firearms training. During a session, the girl inquires of Philip the number of individuals he has killed, instigating a flashback to a sorrowful incident during his time at war. He swiftly recovers from the memory. Later that evening, Philip pays a visit to Tamara, briefing her on the progress of the training. As he heads back to his hotel, he spots someone concealed in a bush. It turns out to be Wayne, attempting to clandestinely visit his secret love interest, Lydia. Philip insists on accompanying Wayne and climbs into the car with him. Upon arrival, Wayne enters to meet with Lydia, while Philip remains outside to survey the area. Suddenly, Wayne's driver notices a car approaching, filled with Terrell's goons. He attempts to alert Wayne, who is preoccupied with Lydia. Philip also observes the approaching vehicle. Soon, the henchmen barge into the house, menacing Wayne with firearms. Unexpectedly, Philip intervenes, catching them off guard and disarming them. The driver aids Philip, bringing in one of the neutralized criminals. Shortly after, Casey arrives and they deliberate on how to handle the captured thugs. Wayne announces his departure, looking forward to inspecting a sports complex the following day. The next day, prior to the event's commencement, Philip confides in Casey about a peculiar feeling he has. Tamara then informs Wayne that the mayor he is scheduled to meet will arrive in five minutes. Philip suggests that Wayne allow his sister to take the stage in his place, a proposal Wayne vehemently rejects. Soon after, the mayor arrives and the event unfolds. While Wayne delivers his speech, Philip identifies a suspicious individual in the audience, prompting the security team to tackle him. The man is revealed to be Simcoe, Terrell's right-hand associate. As Simcoe reaches into his pocket, the security guards assume he is drawing a weapon, resulting in chaos as people flee the venue. The detective who arrives on the scene discovers that Simcoe was merely reaching for his phone, not a gun. As reporters swarm in, the detective publicly ridicules Wayne's security detail. Wayne, now infuriated, labels Philip a schizophrenic who belongs in a mental facility. Tamara, oblivious to these developments, departs in confusion. Philip instructs one of the security guards to follow her and then faces off with Wayne. Feeling publicly humiliated, Philip resigns his position and challenges Wayne to a boxing match at his gym. Wayne immediately agrees. Upon arrival at the gym, Wayne, already prepped and in the ring, eagerly awaits Philip's entrance. Philip makes clear that he wants to engage in a mixed martial arts battle, rather than a traditional boxing match. Both men demonstrate impressive prowess as martial arts fighters. In a prolonged and forthright duel, they eventually reach a deadlock, each clutching the other by the throat. Abruptly, Casey and others burst in, revealing that Tamara has been assaulted and the security guard who protected her is gravely wounded. The group hurriedly proceeds to the hospital, discovering Jesse, the security guard, freshly awakened from a coma. She discloses that she doesn't know Tamara's whereabouts but identifies Simcoe, Terrell's right-hand associate, as one of her attackers. Wayne's immediate reaction is to turn to the authorities, but Philip cautions that doing so would alert Terrell and potentially result in Jesse's death. Philip instructs Jesse to remain silent if approached by the police. Shortly after, a detective arrives to interrogate Jesse, who feigns inability to speak, leading a nurse to send them away. 
Jessie's subsequent inquiry about Temur raises Wayne's suspicion, but she dismisses it as mere intuition. Philip, however, observes something off about the detective's fortuitous presence. Later, as Wayne and Philip are in the car together, Wayne shares what the detective told him about Philip's troubled past. Philip divulges a painful incident from the Iraq War, when he accidentally shot a terrorist wearing a bomb, resulting in an explosion that killed 25 children. This tragedy led to his being labeled insane and committed to a mental institution. Following this revelation, Wayne explains his animosity with Terrell, recalling how Terrell sought to bribe him into throwing a fight early in his career. Wayne's refusal led to the murder of his brother, and his relentless pursuit of justice landed Terrell in prison. Unexpectedly, Lydia calls Wayne, her voice trembling under the threat of a gun, and summons him to her home, insisting he come alone. After the call, Philip insists on accompanying Wayne if they are to resolve the situation. Upon arriving at Lydia's house 30 minutes later, Wayne sees the marks on her face and then discovers Terrell's henchman and the crooked detective in the living room. The detective discloses that Terrell has Tamara, proposing a deal for her return. Without warning, the lights are extinguished and Philip and Casey burst into the house. With military precision, they eliminate the henchman in mere seconds. Wayne then forces the detective at gunpoint to lead them to Terrell's mansion. As they enter the premises, Philip and Casey make a stealthy exit from the car, employing their ninja-like skills. In the garage, Wayne keeps the gun trained on the detective, commanding the henchman to take him to Terrell. Upon hearing of Wayne's arrival, the gangster arms himself with a gun and commands his subordinates to accompany him. Concurrently, Terrell's lawyer goes to check on Tamara, acknowledging that an injustice is unfolding. He removes Tamara's handcuffs just as Philip and Casey enter. Back in the garage, Terrell coldly executes the detective, initiating a chaotic gunfight. While Philip and Casey escort Tamara to safety, Wayne and his team clash with Terrell and his minions. Wayne's allies manage to drive the criminals off, leaving Wayne and Terrell alone in the garage. Terrell suggests resolving their conflict like businessmen, but then abruptly draws a gun, wounding Wayne in the shoulder. Outside, Philip and Casey continue to engage the henchmen in combat. Soon after, the young lawyer enters the garage in an attempt to halt Terrell, only to be shot by him. With Terrell momentarily distracted, Wayne seizes the opportunity to pummel him. Simultaneously, Philip squares off against Simcoe. Another one of Terrell's henchmen enters the garage, leaving Wayne at the mercy of two guns. Philip's timely intervention saves Wayne as he shoots the newly arrived henchman. Terrell responds by shooting Philip, who is thankfully protected by a bulletproof vest. Wayne retaliates by striking Terrell, then crushes him by dropping a car on top of him, ending his life. An ambulance arrives shortly thereafter, revealing that all members of Philip's team have survived. In the wake of the violence, Wayne reunites with his girlfriend, Lydia, and reconciles with Tamara and Philip, cementing their relationship with a kiss. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.